Hey everybody, this is Jeremiah Craig, and about a month and a half ago, I got the chance to talk with Phil Giharo of Hondo Boots, and we had an awesome discussion. Our conversation went in a whole bunch of different directions, but I wanted to share this segment with you guys today, where we talked about the characteristics of a traditional cowboy boot and what makes a cowboy boot traditional. I hope you enjoy. Your boots are very traditional. But before we get into how uh, traditional and unique, I think, uh, your boots are, I'm, I'm yeah. sort of interested in the history okay. of condo boots. All right. Um, and, and I was wondering if you could sort of introduce yourself to Definitely. everybody who's watching and yes. give an overview of yeah. condo boots in general. Absolutely. Yeah. So my name is Phil, Phil Guijarro or Phil Jr. Because the person who established this company is known as Philbert and I'm his son. So I'm a junior. Uh, my dad started Hondo Boots in 1965. And basically what he did was to hit the road in 1965, starting from El Paso, where Hondo Boots has always been based. And uh, so he drove into the Texas Panhandle and into Oklahoma, stopping at boot shops, showing his boots, and, uh, and just taking it from there. That same year, he also drove up north into Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, ending up in the Pacific Northwest, where some of the clients that we have today have been with us pretty much since those first five years, between 1965 and 1970. Um, we've always had the mom and pop shops and those that remain, which are far fewer than in 1965, still kind of identify with boot makers that are also mom and pop. Not only are you traditional in the way that you're doing business, but also in the way that you are making boots. Exactly. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about that and what Definitely. makes your boots yeah. more traditional and yeah. unique to this time period, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting. I'll start by describing this time period, 2019, where there are a million ways to make a boot. And I would think that still in the late 80s, early 90s, a company like ours, uh, people who are still making boots traditionally could look at that modern boot and there was a typical phrase for it, a cheap boot. That's not the word that applies anymore. There's so many ways to make a boot and each one of those ways has a market and has a certain utility. So just to name a few of those ways, you might be looking at a boot that has a cushioned insole or a gel insole. Below that gel insole is something like a pressed cardboard or leather fiber insole because your foot's never really gonna have to do anything with it. Your foot is always on the gel insole. The heels might be also a fiber, a compressed material heel. And, and those boots have so many layers of space age technology. You see it in all of the packaging. That's a legitimate thing now. Um, back when we started in 1965, there was kind of just one way to make boots, one way to make shoes out of all leather, hand blasting them. Um, and with uh, something that I had explained to you before, something called the channeled insole. So, um, so in a nutshell, we have never evolved <laughs> for better or for worse. We're probably, we're the small company with a big name in this industry. I have to stress that we are quite small. Uh, at the end of the day, we're looking at a couple hundred clients that really consume from us uh, regularly, stores that consume from us regularly. So, so uh, we've never evolved and those few customers that, that are loyal to us are just looking for that boot to put in their shelf next to all those other boots made in different ways. I think a boot that really deserves the title traditional is going to have a stacked leather heel. It's going to have a leather heel counter. It's going to have cowhide leather lining. It's going to be hand blasted. So the lasting process, that's something that's difficult to explain during a video. But basically, when you see a, a boot line, a boot process where you see the boot maker stretching the leather with pliers by hand over the shoe last, stretching that upper over the shoe last and nailing it on the bottom into the insole, that is, uh, that's the lasting process described as done by hand. 
in, uh, in many other situations, you have machine lasting, where there's tiny little hands, tiny little tweezers that come out of a machine and just pull the leather down. The difference is that a machine has a pre-recorded, pre-programmed amount of stretch. Hand lasting takes the individual stretch out of every little part, every single part of a cowhide. So leather will stretch a little more on the ends, a little less in the center, bring the next animal in, that one might have more stretch or less stretch. And the whole point of hand lasting is so that you can wear that boot forever and that boot will fit forever instead of just kind of melting like butter, stretching out over time, your foot stretching out over the sole because there was a lot more stretch in that leather than was necessary. The other thing that I would say gives the award of traditional, the certification of traditional to a boot or a shoe, is when the insoles are channeled. What I'm referring to there, uh, it requires visuals. But basically, at the end of the day, um, some of your viewers may or may not know which part of the boot is called the welt. The welt is basically, I would describe it as a bridge that connects the sole onto the rest of the boot. So that bridge that connects to the sole, it also has to connect to the rest of the boot. It'll connect to the rest of the boot via the insole. So when you have a channeled insole, you are stitching the welt directly into the leather insole. When you have the opposite of a channeled insole, which is um, a process of applying a synthetic rib onto the insole, you're basically only stitching your welt into a synthetic rib that is glued to the insole. It just adds another layer of weakness right there. It adds something, a material which is not leather. And depending on who you ask, some people will always argue on the side that leather is always the most resistible material that you can have in footwear. One last little thing to say about that particular aspect of whether you have a channeled insole construction or a ribbed insole construction is on the side of repairability. When you take your boots in to get resold, any cobbler, any um, shoe resoler that you ask will have a much easier time when the boot is built in that, in that traditional way with a channeled insole. So as you have the opportunity to go to boot factories around the world, if you get the chance to tour one, that's something that's easy to spot. You'll either see that they make boots and you see this, this white sort of firm textile rib that is glued onto the bottom of the insole, not over here where your foot goes, but over here in the bottom where your eyes never, never see. Um, that stands out and you'll know what you're looking at. Can you talk a little bit about the advantages um, yeah. about having that hard leather sole yeah. over the more popularized insoles, uh, the foam, the gel that Absolutely. a lot of other companies are yeah. doing now? When you try a traditional boot on, the first thing that impacts you is how comfortable it is. I would describe a leather insole as feeling quite silky, quite smooth when you're stepping on it. You described a process that happens over months of wearing that boot where um, as you step on a leather insole, you're kind of burnishing it with every step that you take. You're burnishing it, and that burnishing process starts to uh, create grooves like you described them. The imprint of your foot starts to burnish that in, and it just becomes more and more and more comfortable than on day one. If you're not too used to wearing footwear, which is just a cushion, and not too shocked by the initial a sensation that you're stepping on something firm, which is the leather insole, then um, I think from the very beginning, you can sense that the boot is comfortable, that it doesn't require uh, wearing it in, breaking it in, uh, because of that sensation, that silky sensation that a nice leather insole gives you. I think that when people feel that a boot is uncomfortable, it really comes down to fit. They might have a boot which is too short on them or too narrow on them. Even a boot that is too wide on you can produce a very uncomfortable uh, piece of footwear. So it really comes down to, to getting the right size in um, overcoming that shock when all you want to feel is, uh, is a cloud when you, when you step into the boot. 
What makes a cowboy boot traditional? How do you keep things original? It's gotta have a stacked leather heel and a leather heel counter and the cowhide leather lining. It's gotta be hand lasted and have channeled in soles. And then it's traditional. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace.